everyone, and welcome to Deciphering the Content. There's been quite a few things that have come up, and I thought, you know, let's let's get into it and let's talk about it. Um, the past couple of weeks, Peter has not been able to join us, and there's been a lot going on um, astrally. And uh, there's been, uh, I'll, tell, I'll just come right out and say it, there's been Hell Week. Uh, for, you know, like the military would understand this, that's that, you know, first week where, where you get into things and, and you know, you pretty much are, you're going to make it or break it. And the past couple, I will say about almost two months, has been pretty brutal for me. I haven't said anything, but uh, it's been quite aggressive uh, waking up like, you know, I've been in battle and sore and uh, with no explanation other than, you know, some memories here and there. And um, other people are going through these situations and I can't quite talk too much about it and Peter is not able to talk about it. Uh, during this time, I did see myself in Wall Rider and uh, as a young girl and I was bouncing the ball and, and there were... Um, these people sitting around in wheelchairs and and drooling and, and looked like they had shock treatments and horrible experimentations done on them and it was very uh, shadowy and, and difficult to look at and I was observing myself trying to pull myself out of that situation and asking that those people could get rescued too because they're all victims. But, um, you know, people say, well, you know, it's hard to, well, this, this is just a video game. And, uh, no, these things have really happened, and I'm going to show you. Um, I found this article, and this is a historical thing that happened. It's called Unit 731, and it's uh, called the Camo Detachment, also the Ishi Unit was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army that undertook lethal human experimentation during the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937 to 1945 of World War II. And I had never heard about this. I'd, I'd never seen anything like this. And um, it made me think about Arasaka, you know, in the future, because um, the horrible things that happened uh, also, you know, because of the Wall Rider, I ended up being connected to that Alt Cunningham. It's a lot of these characters there are real in the future and trying to change that timeline. But, you know, putting people through certain traumas extracting the soul, using the, the soul. I mean, they do have the technology to use the soul, take the soul, and then implant it into um, a, an android body and a, somewhat make a sentient android. And we know this stuff is already happening. We've already talked about it. And um, I'm just trying to, you know, build a little bit more on, on the knowledge of, um, you know, not trying to convince anyone, but lay out that these experiments have been going on since 1937 in Japan, probably even before then, and not just Japan, and in the Soviet Union, the United States, and um, many, many other um, nations. And so, um, and probably in, in the UK as well. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, and of course, we know that um, you know the Murkoff, the Murkoff um, project was so bad that even the Russians didn't want to deal with it, and they sent them to to Canada. And the Canadians obviously weren't aware of, of what was going on there, and that's that's where you know I got hooked into that Wall Rider incident because I, I don't live that far from Canada. I mean. Growing up in Boston, it's it's not a huge distance, but um, yeah, en enough for for you know close enough. But anyhow, getting back to this, I just want to show you that these things are here, and if and you really have to have the stomach for this because if you start looking deep into this, it's it's horrifying. 
and um, you know what they've done in insane asylums, justifying experimentation on on humans. Uh, these type of things are starting to bleed through into our everyday reality, and we know this with you know shots. And I, I'm not going to say what you know say it out loud, but we know what they are. Um, and you know it's it's just getting permeating more into our reality. And because people are looking the other way, they don't want to talk about it. They think it can never happen. Um, it has happened. It will happen. Um, and we need to be um, sharing information so people will become more and more knowledgeable. And there's a really a lot of good people that don't see any harm in a lot of different things, but they don't have the background information. If they did, I think I'm positive that they would change their mind and and stop things. Remember, um, the medical field has always been a place of research. There are some uh, fringe groups or individuals who have pushed the envelope, who will do things um, beyond consciousness. And uh, so it's even if it's like one or two percent that has done that, and maybe there's more. I don't know what the percentage is. All I know is that when you start crossing that line is is when things get pretty pretty bad so with knowledge is power is responsibility and um it also can provide protection because you have something to refer to so let's talk a little bit about what happened here um the researchers Involved in Unit 731 was secretly given immunity by the United States in exchange for the data they gathered through human experimentation. And, you know, we're talking about the, the 30s, 40s, 40, no, went to 1945, and then it came into the MKUltra projects, um, and we've talked about that before as well. So... Um, the United States got involved with what uh, Japan was doing and thought it was interesting. So, and uh, they managed to arrest the uh, other researchers that the Soviet forces managed to arrest first were tr uh, tried at the Kabar Kabarov Kabarovsk war crime trials in 1949. The Americans did not try the researchers, so the information and experience gained in bioweapons uh, could be co-opted to their biological warfare program, which they had done with uh, German researchers in Operation Paperclip. So you're seeing this uh, entangled web here of things that happened all under the guise of, of um, not only science, but in warfare. And, uh, you know, supposedly the research that they did on me and some others it gave them knowledge. And many of the uh, experiencers, uh, super soldiers or whatever, have been used in projects that they gained knowledge from and um, added to augmentation and so forth. Some of the augmentation was helpful. Some of it was not. Some of the experimentations were very harmful to people. Some of them enhanced them. And but and that's why this whole topic can be very controversial at times. Um, you have to read more of what happened here. Um, the type of uh, experiments that they did and as i started getting uh deeper into it i i was just like you know i mean it's it's not for everyone to be reading but if like i said if if you can look at it and and see the information then uh but this is this is um history this is a part of history probably the type they're trying to get rid of all of the history so people will, can be extremely vulnerable again. And, and um, you know, we're seeing that even just, 
I think they want to burn all all the books, <laughs> the children's books, that they feel are offensive. Everything is 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 crazy. So, um, anyhow, this you know resulting cholera uh, anthrax a plague was estimated to have killed at least four hundred thousand Chinese civilians. That they did. This is uh, during uh, they planned a plague as a bi biological weapon against San Diego, California. The plan was scheduled in September 22nd, 1945, but Japan surrendered five weeks earlier. And um, plague fleas infest, infected clothing, infected supplies encased in bombs were dropped in various targets. 1945. We're in the year 2021. And how is this any different? Human targets were used to test grenades, position at various distances, various positions. Flamethrowers were tested humans. Humans were also tied to stakes, used as targets to test pathogen, releasing bombs, chemical weapons, explosive bombs as well, bayonets on knives. Uh, low pressure chambers, uh, people were putting until their eye, eyes popped out of the socket. I mean, just a horrendous. Horrendous things that they did. Here's one where they did um, experimental with uh, syphilis. They would deliberately give people syphilis and then have them have sex with someone else, and uh, and then you know experiment and see what happened there. Uh, raped and forced pregnancy. There's a plague flea bombing, and uh, this it was another bacteriological warfare. About 3,000 men and women, from which at least 600 every year were provided by the Kempatai, were subjected to experimentation conducted by Unit uh, 731 at the camp in Pingfang alone, which does not include victims from other medical experimentation sites, such as Unit 100. And then they talk about this uh, POW camp, the Royal Army of Ordnance Corps, and so forth. Uh, here is the, the commander, the commander Shiro Ishii, uh, of Unit three or uh, seven thirty one. That looks like I guess that's the facility that it looked like. Looks extremely industrial. Every time I see these industrial sites, oh, you it, you do wonder what's going on in some of them. They call it a puppet state. Uh, Unit 731 is based in Pingfang District of Harbin, the largest gas chamber in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo, now Northeast China, and had an active branch offices through China and Southeast Asia. So you can read through this article. I don't want to read it directly through. Um, I'd rather people just take a look at it. This is a very shocking um this very disturbing story. If you don't have the stomach for it, don't don't listen to it. But essentially, uh, they um, wanted to experiment with this gas that they had, and they had a bunch of, I believe it was uh, prisoners. Yeah, uh, Russian scientists, World War II, forced prisoners to stay awake for 15 days using experimental stimulant. And the results were horrifying. Um, uh, this Mr. Balin, he's, he has a military background. I think he's in special forces. I thought he did an excellent job. And, uh, he, you know, essentially what he said was the people just, like, I don't know, it was probably the, the combination of, you know, sleep deprivation, which I have had clients that have had serious issues with sleep deprivation, but then add uh, this, uh, this drug 
that was uh, pumped into the air. And it made them completely, I don't know if they were hallucinating and losing their mind and, and literally, um, uh, you know, tearing their own flesh off of their body, just like horrifying things. And the thing which was shocking is they refused to stop the experiment until the 15 days were over, despite how bad it went. Like horrifying. These are the type of things when people say, well, War Rider was just a video game. Um... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I know that these things have happened. And if it isn't exactly the way that uh, out, um, Outlast video game displays, then it has derived uh, scenarios from other facilities that have definitely done some of these things. So I'll have these links there for you to look through and, and think about and see um, uh, comparisons to some of the things that we see are prevalent today, you know, in um, kind of a less obvious way, but kind of hints of, of what they're um, trying to bring in because, you know, th they've become desensitized to it. We have not. They think that, that they still are of a mindset that, that the mass public is available for any type of um, experimentation, and we are not. We are not. We are sentient beings connected to the divine, and no one has a right to tamper with our, our DNA, RNA, our um, genetics, our immune system, our muscular or, or mental facilities. No one has a right to do that. We are not owned by anyone. It doesn't matter what people claim. We are not owned by any government or any um, facility, any district. We are owned. Uh, we are sovereign, and we are connected to the God Source. That's the bottom line. Anything besides that is a violation. And if people say, "Well, this is a prison," then uh, they're completely wrong. If they choose to be in a prison themselves, that's their choice. But we don't consent or agree to any of that. And so we're saying no. Okay, another thing that's been coming up is um, this uh, cats. <laughs> and I've been telling people, I don't know if it's raining cats and dogs. Well, you know, I don't know, know any other way to say it. But this, this whole thing with um, uh, these, these cats that have been showing up around people. I've been seeing them. And I was trying to figure out what the, the source of it was and, and even, you know, had conversations with Peter who, who was invaded by, you know, some cats. And they didn't harm him. They just can't, kind of came in and and they're showing up in all different places. And, um, you know, I had a... Uh, I had some... A sad incident. I don't know if I want to bring it up, but... Um, uh, where somebody lost a cat and they were horrified, you know, how it, it was a very strange situation. And so, like I said, you know, it just keeps showing up. And there was this, we found this story from uh, Japan of um, a shapeshifter who turned themselves into a cat. And uh, the reason that the cat's uh, seen in the yokai and Japanese myth mythology is attributed to many of their characteristics. For example... The irises of their eyes change shape depending on the time of day. The fur can be seem to cause sparks when they are petted, kind of like static electricity. And uh, you know, it's it's just you know, there's there's a lot of intrigue about cats. I mean, they they are you know another species, and we do get along very well with them. And also, but we do know that they have parameters, and especially the big cats. Um, can be considered a predator. <laughs> so, but in the, what I've been seeing is that they, they're just having a very, very strong presence. And um, I also noticed that uh, um, in my pursuit to find out what's going on with some of the cats, um, I found this uh, keyhole, which I was going to discuss with Peter. And uh, the keyhole, um, I guess, has a 
has been there for many years. And but we'll we'll get into that um at a later time. But I thought it's it's a burial mound that looks like the key leads to something, doesn't it? You know, or the key master from the matrix or I don't know, maybe it's since we're along the line of some of the Japanese information. There's also the the uh cat mummies. There is uh this this is I believe it's an older article. Yeah, this is 2018, November 14th. Um, dozens of cat mummies plus 100 cat statues discovered in a 4,500-year-old Egyptian tomb. And, and the Egyptians had a high reference for cats. And it was very common. I guess this was found in a tomb near Cairo. And then, of course, they talk about Bastet and, and the goddess cats. Um said to be the daughter of Re or the god of the sun. Uh, or I, I don't know if they mean Ra. But um, while the cats were revered by ancient Egyptians, they were, weren't directly worshipped. Rather, gods like Bastet were often depicted in the physical characteristics of an animal that was uh, considered divine. Here's another one. Uh, this is November 25th, 2019. Ancient lion, crocodile, and cat mummies unearthed in Egypt. So this is an, a year later. And you see uh, there was a big scarab statue that they pulled out. And there, there are all those... Uh, all those mummies of cats. Their meticulously mummified animals were found uh, buried alongside dozens of animal statues made of sandstone, wood, and bronze, such as 75 cats of various shapes, sizes, sculptures of the Apis bull deity, a mongoose, ibis, falcon, and the god Anubis, formed with the, the body of a man and the head of a jackal. Okay, so here's a more recent article. So, I mean, I don't know if the mummies are coming to life or what's going on, but where are all these cats coming from that I've been seeing? And this is February 26, 2021. Uh, graves of nearly 600 cats and dogs in ancient Egypt may be the world's oldest pet cemetery. Now, Peter's also talked about the Akita, the, this, that... Um, I don't know if it's from Russia or northern uh, dog species is very large. And they also have been activated in some way or, you know, being reacting to certain things. It could be that our world is is disrupting them. And, and many people have cats and dogs and they're good indicators of what's going on. And if there's any type of danger, um, any type of anomalies, any type of astral interference, any type of weather issues, they're much more attuned to the earth and can pick it up sooner. And so it's like having a little, like a scout there for you who's able to uh, check out everything and make sure everything's all right. Um, and of course, they, they become a uh, type of protectors. Uh, cats, you know, less protectors uh, physically, but I think um, telepathically that they're quite powerful and uh, dogs of course will will try to defend bark or do something to uh, you know alarm everyone and so here's you know these but you know thinking about you know these ancient cats possibly coming to life or coming back is something that I'm not discarding because of all the activity and this one right here was this cat from Bernice. And look at it has like gemstones and stuff or has a bronze collar. Oh, it's bronze. Almost like it looks like that patina that you see on copper. But you can see that they're very cared for and adorned. 
And uh, but um, not necessarily just to be like gods, but there was a you know a respect for animals, which we should do too. We should also have that that level of respect for animals. And um, and the genetics of animals should not be tampered with any more than the genetics of humanity should be tampered with. And so that's the reason why I brought in this movie called Splice. And this movie was very disturbing to me because it literally the uh, scientists under, under the guise of experimentation are trying to help humanity to resolve diseases uh, decided to um, experiment and merge a few different species together and then thought that uh, she would take it the next level and bring in humanity um, and refer to the uh, donor of, of the uh, genetics as being Jane Doe, but literally it was her. So she creates her own child and merges it with uh, multiple other animals. And uh, I don't know, it, it's almost, it's like a cat species. You can see it's like a tail, but it does have like this sharp edge to the tail. And um, uh, it's, it starts off, you know, very like, oh, you know, the child is this hybrid, seems somewhat sweet, but has a dark, very dark, side to it and uh, everything goes goes wrong everything goes wrong in this this uh experiment um technically the characters clive nicoli and elsa cast hope to achieve fame by splicing and how many of these projects you know they're they're being applauded or awarded for experimenting with uh the human uh, genetics and, um, you know, the cloning projects and all of these other things that they've gotten into. And, and um, you know, some of these people are, like, in high regard in our society. And uh, uh, taking on, um, you know, as if they're, they're some kind of uh, God creator. And, but, you know, keep in mind that when you're creating these things we don't actually know what what happens what is actually entering into the body because it doesn't seem to have any type of um, consciousness in you know in these scenarios and uh you know, peter's often talked about hybrids and their um influence on the planet is very powerful but yet they don't they're they're um bitter because they knew they were test subjects and uh do not do not have the highest intent for us and you know i've talked about um this group of hybrids that got into a power seat of some of the ancients that left here on the planet and they were literally tuning into kind of like a a, a projecting a point or perspective and that was when i i told that story about um uh, my recall of uh, Jason Hudson and when I was uh, involved with that and I could see them all sitting and the, uh, laying on these uh, these beds that um, another species or race would come in and who are benevolent and, and support humanity maybe introduce new thoughts that related to inventions and things like that and instead you had these hybrids that were angry um, had uh, no connection to the God source and were pouring out, you know, probably violence and anger and, and other things. And, and essentially, this is the type of stuff that I feel is, is happening and part of the reason why our world is the way it is. Um, so uh, in this story, you know, another thing that happens is that the female, uh, in the, the first project where they have this, this uh, hybrid creature and these two hybrid creatures, a male and a female, and at some point the... the uh, and, and I'm I'm spoiling I'm being a spoiler right now regarding the movie, but at some point the male uh, or the female turns into a male, and I don't know if because of the experimentation that the female genetics doesn't get sustained because I think essentially even with the human body and the biology, um, everyone has the the male genetics, and then at some point that you know it, it decides to become female. It's like a um, that's part of the uh, process from what I can remember from science. I might, I might be wrong, but I, I'm pretty much, you know, trying to recall how it worked and I'm seeing how this, 
happened here, and it also happened with this um, uh, being called Dren that was a uh, hybrid human and uh, begins as a female. It looks like, it looks like it goes through a death a couple times and then reemerges into this other, you know, it's almost like an immortal. It doesn't die. I don't think it's um, a sentient being inside of it, to be honest with you. And uh, then at some point later becomes a male, impregnates the mother. Um, and, uh, you know, then there's this constant cycle of, you know, uh, probably bringing in this dynamic of, of this hybrid uh, species into the uh, human genetics. Which um, also then reminded me of this movie Predestination where, um, uh, you know, this the time traveler goes back and has uh, sex with themselves and uh, then creates, has a child and creates this paradox. Um, so I, you know, that it just sort of reminded me of that, but you probably saying, why are you watching these really creepy, awful movies? Um, but because these, these things are, this is what's happening. You know, um, these two are the same. In the movie, yes, I spoiled this movie as well and <laughs> told you what the storyline is. But um, you don't have to watch it, or you can watch it, or some of you might be already aware of it. And I think um, as time goes on and you see that the evolution of these people, you know, like this, these two, um, you know, are become so hostile and antisocial that they become this, um, this, this bomber. You know, that they cause great destruction because they're, they know all the different things that have happened to them. And so that they're in despair, they can't break the cycle. And, you know, and that's the same thing that we're putting these, these hybrids into is they don't die, but they're retaining this hostility and anger and rejection from humanity. I mean, how else would they act? So, uh, this is, you know, um, my thoughts about experimentation. And also, I just want to differentiate. I believe that these great god, these um, Egyptian gods are an entirely different species. They're, they're not from our experimentations. They're not from human experimentations. But um, something that was created in our universe at some time, some place, um, they existed before humans did. And the animal kingdoms... Uh, the, the species, some of those species were here before humans that are here on the planet now. Um, but they have sentient life in them. And some may disagree that, that they don't like the Egyptians and that, that's fine. But in my opinion, they're old. They've been here for a long time. And they do understand the laws of the universe as opposed to those who don't. And those um, entities that are being bioengineered. Uh, here on the planet by uh, self-proclaimed gods called scientists, biologists or whatever, um, and corporations or elite uh, government projects. I, I don't know, but, well, I do know, but, um, uh, so th that, that these things are, you know, to differentiate between the two. And, you know, here's this, um, we were talking about the Egyptian uh, cats that were unearthed and in here is Bastet or Sekhmet. Um, I'm not sure which which one it is, but um, anyhow, on and that's Anubis. Everyone knows who Anubis, this is Horus. Whether or not they just wore headdresses to not reveal their face or they morphed, um, they had these different attributes. Uh, that's something that existed before, but it, it is intriguing the experimentations of Atlantis, where they created hybrid beings, that was the ETs doing that. Same thing happened. It was the downfall of, of Atlantis because there is a lack of consciousness, responsibility, rejection from humanity. And so um, it creates a severe hostility, but yet they have abilities to take over, to, to um, destroy, to manipulate on levels because of their higher levels of tele telepathy and and um, power. So um, anyhow, uh, 
Uh, this is um, something, I don't know if this, I brought this up because we talked about it's raining cats and dogs. Uh, there's, you know, the dogs that were unearthed from Egypt. And now that we see uh, another thing of uh, compassion, r- Russia's stray dogs with bright colored fur. Um, they appeared in industrial areas, hundreds of miles apart, um, in, which kind of feels like it probably is chemicals. I wanted to have this discussion with Peter and uh, see, you know, what's going on. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a striking color, but um, what are they being exposed to? Is someone just dyeing them or are they, or is it the chemicals actually changing them? Could that change humans? I don't really know. Um, this was uh, a dog that was actually literally died by its owner. And Rapper Valley, I guess, did that to the dog. And I don't know if that's becoming kind of popular to do, but uh, I, I can't imagine it would be very healthy for the dog. I mean, we die our hair, but um, I don't know. I mean, um, it's a matter of ethics or whatever, but I guess that in this case, this was chemicals that that they were probably exposed to, but... Here again, we'll get more information on that, but this is, you know, carries on with animals. And then, uh, of course, we know there's been horrible experimentations done to animals as well. And we, we uh, I'm bringing this up not to get everyone in, in distress, to be angry, but to be informed and with information and knowledge, um, set your intentions to have these things cleared as to neutralize the power of the hybrids and those that are manipulating our reality without our consent and that maybe there is a place for them and maybe uh, they uh, can exercise their right of opinion, um, be amongst each other and um, I don't know, or to learn to, uh, I mean, they didn't ask to come in here to this, this reality. Uh, especially if they were uh, created in a lab somewhere. So uh, we're going to ask to have everything neutralized and disempower some of their abilities, telepathic and influences on our planet that uh, if it is hostile and contrary to humanity because of their feelings of rejection and isolation and their treatment of being experimented on, and trust me, anyone that's been experimented on is not typically um, open to the public, you know, open to humanity. Uh, they don't feel things are benevolent or loving. So, I mean, we can understand their perspective, but, you know, recognizing that we need to uh, ask for help and neutralizing it because um, otherwise, you know, I think this is part of the problems they're they're creating making decisions for our reality, and that is a violation of our right, um, but the irresponsibility of the scientists and those that are, you know, like in Unit 731 or um, some of these experiments, none of these things could should be going on. Anyhow, humans are divine, and Animals are divine. Everything is created by the God source. Should be protected always. And I want you to stay strong with me and uh, hold on to that and and proclaim that we don't consent or agree to any of these agendas. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a good day and leave your comments below.